As the saying goes, there is strength in numbers. Throughout history, nations have formed massive armies for conquest and self-defense. In today's video, we're going to take a trip through history as we explore the top 15 largest armies of all time. Number 15. The Ming Dynasty one massive military that's often forgotten in the annals of history is that of China's Ming Dynasty. Sporting the world's largest army between the 15th and the 17th centuries, the Ming generally had between 800,000 and 1.3 million troops at any one time. And they used these troops to score impressive military victories against neighboring threats such as the Mongols. However, while the Ming army had some cool innovations in the realm of military technology, such as the creation of new siege weapons and fire lances, the army's large amount of bureaucracy and constant threats stretched its resources thin, and by the 1630s it was partially thanks to the army's lack of military effectiveness that the Ming Dynasty ultimately collapsed. Number 14. The Russian Military While the Russian military is one of the most formidable modern forces on paper, it is in many respects considered to be a paper tiger. That's because despite having a total of about 2 million soldiers and about 1.1 million soldiers on active duty, Russia has failed to use these troops effectively in its invasion of Ukraine. While there are many explanations for this, many blame poor leadership, a lack of morale, and the inability to defend against Ukrainian attacks on supply lines and logistics as primary factors. And to date, things have gotten so bad that conscripts have reportedly been thrown to the front lines with practically zero training. As a result, while Russia's military may be big, by all accounts, it certainly isn't mighty. Number 13. The Mongols as far as invading armies go, few forces were quite as feared as the Mongols. After all, at their peak they controlled land as far east as South Korea, as far west as Poland, as far north as the Arctic, and as far south as Pakistan, making the Mongol Empire the largest contiguous land empire in world history. While the size of its military is disputed to this day, many reports believe that it may have had as many as a million service members at any one time, which would in theory make it the first army in the world to break that one million soldier mark. In any case, while the Mongols' use of horses and quick light cavalry tactics made them a formidable force across the steppes of Asia, their soldiers were unable to surpass the challenges posed by large medieval castles in the west and the Sea of Japan in the east, and as a result, despite their massive expansions, the Mongols were unable to push their way into what were potentially more lucrative territories. Number 12. The French Empire when it comes to size, few armies have been as large as some of the ones fielded by the French army. While France's large and often very hands-on colonial administration meant that it always had a relatively large number of soldiers on duty, the empire very rarely was a world leader in terms of total number of troops. However, at some very specific points in history, its size was simply unmatched. For example, during the times of Napoleon, the Grand Army was able to swell to a then unprecedented 2.5 million people thanks to the introduction of mass conscription over large areas of conquered land. Similarly, during World War II, France enacted mass conscription to field an army of over 5 million, putting it toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Germans in terms of size. Yet, despite its large armies, poor tactical decisions ultimately led to the French defeat in each of these two conflicts. And this goes to show that size is sometimes not enough to produce a victory. Number 11. The German Empire While Germany had a far larger fighting force during the World War II years, the size of its army both before and after World War I was nonetheless formidable. Consisting of about 700,000 soldiers, the army was largely made up of young conscripts who were made to serve terms of two to three years during peacetime. Yet during times of war, the army's ranks would swell immensely. For example, during conflicts such as the Franco-Prussian War and World War I, the total army size grew to as many as 1.15 million soldiers during the former and 5.3 million during the latter. And while the German Empire successfully used its men to crush France during the Franco-Prussian War in 1871, they were the ones who got crushed during World War I largely thanks to the arrival of the Americans. Most shockingly of all, due to the Treaty of Versailles, their terms of defeat were so bad that their armies were reduced to a measly 100,000 at the war's end. However, once Hitler came to power, that situation quickly began to change. Number 10. The Qing Dynasty while there are many massive militaries that have created a lot of critical acclaim, the Qing Dynasty has often been forgotten in discussions about massive militaries, 
Coming into power in 1636, for much of their existence, they were the largest army in the world, as they had an army of about one million men from 1650 until 1850, and even after their eventual decline, they still had a formidable standing army of 650,000 in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Now, when the first army came into being, it was a powerful force, and by many accounts could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with most Western armies. However, by the 1800s, this was starting to change, as throughout the century, the British smashed the Qing army in a series of conflicts known as the Opium Wars, with this being largely due to the fact that China's weaponry, ships, and forts had not been improved very much since the 17th century. As a result, by the turn of the 20th century, China was unable to resist encroachments by Western powers, and by 1912, the dynasty had effectively collapsed. Number 9. The Indian Military Given India's very large population, it should come as little surprise that it also has a very large military. Often denied the credit it deserves, the Indian military is an able force of over 5.1 million soldiers, with about 1.5 million of these combatants serving as active members. This makes it the second largest military force in the world in terms of active service members. Yet beyond the numbers, the reason why the army is so big can partially be attributed to history. This is because while many Indian politicians initially envisioned the Indian army being very small and friendly with all of its neighbors, this was little more than a pipe dream, as India was quickly shown how impossible such a situation was when it was obliterated by China during the Sino-Indian War of 1962. As a result, ever since this conflict, India has developed a strong military, and they're now a real force to be reckoned with, due to both their large numbers and impressive array of weapons. And given the fact that they're surrounded by enemies in Pakistan and China, that's probably for the best. Number 8. China While there are some modern countries that beat out China when reserve and paramilitary troops are added into the calculation, China blows everyone else out of the water in terms of active military numbers. Coming in at about 2 million active soldiers, China's People's Liberation Army is a force to be reckoned with, as ever since 1980, they've been the world's largest army of active soldiers in terms of numerical size. Now, in many respects, China's numbers are menacing. After all, not only does the Middle Kingdom have a massive amount of soldiers, but they also have a population of 1.4 billion to draw troops from, meaning that any prolonged conflict against China would be absolutely devastating. However, the one silver lining is that what China has in numbers it lacks in military development, as despite having a very strong military-industrial complex, China is nonetheless about 5 to 10 years behind the United States in practically every piece of military technology, be that planes, tanks, submarines, or long-range missiles. As such, while the Chinese army will be a force to watch in the coming decades, its numbers really don't tell the whole story. Number 7. The Russian Empire while the Red Army was the largest Russian army to ever be fielded, the Army of the Russian Empire from the mid-1800s to early 1900s was also a formidable force. While not particularly successful, after all the Russians managed to lose the Crimean War, Sino-Japanese War, and World War I, while only winning against smaller nations in much more minor conflicts such as uprisings, in terms of numbers, the Russian Empire's forces were still very large. After all, in the 1850s, they were the largest force in the world with a combined total of about 1.2 million troops, and in later decades, the Russians took top honors again with an army of 1.3 million in 1890, 1.4 million in 1900, and 1.5 million in 1910. By the time of World War I, widespread conscription meant that about 19 million men were mobilized to either be soldiers or military support workers. Yet this mobilization ended up being Russia's downfall. Dogged by poor leadership and low morale, Russia faced severe losses against the numerically weaker German army. And in 1917, Russia was forced to conditionally surrender to Germany. Yet with so many militarily trained and armed men and such a weak central government, Russia had essentially become a powder keg. It was thanks to this that many army divisions began defecting from the imperial government, and soon Russia spiraled into a state of chaos that led to a civil war between the White and Red armies that ultimately involved tens of millions of people and led to the rise of the USSR. Number 6. The German Third Reich Western Europe is a pretty big place, yet despite this, the German army of World War II infamy managed to capture the entire area in just six weeks. In order to do so, they needed to field a big army, and by all accounts, manpower was something that Germany certainly did not lack. 
You see, at the end of World War I, the Treaty of Versailles limited Germany's fighting force to a token army of just 100,000. But over the years, Germany continued to defy the treaty. By the eve of the war in 1939, the ranks of the German army had swelled to an impressive 4.7 million men. And by the German army's high point in 1943, it had a total of 11 million men. It was with a combination of numbers, great organization, superior military weapons, and millions of pills of crystal meth that German soldiers advanced with frightening speed across Western Europe and beyond, inflicting heavy casualties wherever they went. However, the Germans made the fatal mistake of marching into Russia in 1941, and it was during their fight in Russia that Germany lost about 4 million soldiers, decimating their army's strength and resources. It was largely a result of this catastrophic failure and the advancing of the Soviet Union that Germany began to have supply and troop shortages on both fronts, and eventually things got so bad Germany was forced to create a force out of teenagers and old men in order to keep up their military activities. However, the fortunate reality is that these efforts did little to stop the advance of both armies, and by the time Germany surrendered to the Allies in 1945, it was a shell of its former self. Number 5. North Korea North Korea is run by the infamous dictator Kim Jong-un, and in order to control the population, he runs a massive military that involves large percentages of the population. More specifically, the current laws dictate that after a boy or a girl graduates high school, they must commit to serving 10 years in the military if they're a man and 7 years if they're a woman. And it's as a result of this that the North Korean army has 1.2 million active soldiers, about 600,000 reservists, and about 6 million in its paramilitary forces, putting the total at about 7.8 million people. This does make it the world's largest fighting force, and given that about 30% of North Korean population is connected to one of the three branches of the military, it's clear that staging a war in North Korea would lead to a prolonged conflict. However, when it comes to the makeup of the North Korean army, it should come as little surprise that it's largely made up of the lower classes. After all, those who attend certain high schools are college-educated or bribe recruiting authorities are able to skip out on military service altogether, while those who don't have the money to pay for a complete exception can pay a smaller bribe to ensure that their child ends up serving in a cushier unit near Pyongyang rather than in a more difficult unit out in the countryside. Yet, no matter what unit you're a part of, conditions are pretty rough, and as soldiers are routinely forced to do construction and agricultural labor in order to support the state, food rations tend to be very small, and discipline is quite strict. As such, while the North Korean army may be massive, it's undoubtedly not an enjoyable organization to be part of. Number 4. The Red Army while the Red Army had the largest army in the world at various times during its existence, at its largest it was actually second fiddle to the United States with a smaller but still very impressive force of about 11.5 million men. And when it came to organization and effectiveness, the Red Army was a force that was plagued with problems at the beginning of the war. This is because in 1937 Stalin purged his army of its best officers in order to wipe out any possible political opponents. While this solidified his position as dictator, what it also did was severely handicap his army. With all of the Soviet Union's best and most creative military leaders dead, Stalin had banked on the fact that his pact with Hitler would mean that the Soviet Union would not be invaded by Germany. However, when the Soviet Union faced severely heavy losses against Finland during the nearly unsuccessful Winter War and discovered that they would face a German invasion via Operation Barbarossa, Stalin realized that he had to get his army's act together quickly to avoid total annihilation. Now, while the popular misconception that Stalin simply threw soldiers into the meat grinder was far from true, what is true is that the Soviet Union had to use the stifling cold and its numerical advantage to win battles, and it was only through heavy and often high casualty fighting that the Soviet Union was able to push the Axis back out of the country. It should also be noted that while the Red Army had about 11.5 million men at its peak, it had far more throughout the entirety of the war, yet given the fact that a total of 11 million Soviet soldiers died during the conflict, the total number does not fully reflect the Army's total size. Thus, while the Red Army was a strong fighting force, it was also one in which mortality was high and danger always lurked around the corner. Number 3. South Korea when it comes to total size, few modern armies are quite as overlooked as South Korea. 
After all, when active, reserve, and paramilitary members are all taken into account, South Korea has an astounding fighting force of 6.7 million, putting it ahead of both China and the United States, and only just behind North Korea in terms of manpower. Now, the reasons why this army is so large are complex, but it can really be boiled down to two things, the proximity of China and North Korea and the onset of conscription. Now, on one hand, South Korea is a Western country with a direct border with the often turbulent state of North Korea and the emerging superpower of China, and as a result, it's constantly under a very real military threat. And given the fact that it was invaded during the Korean War in the 1950s and has had a pretty bad track record of constantly being invaded by Japan and China in centuries past, the idea of a strong military is a salient one for many Koreans, and as a result, there are many who are willing to serve. Yet the reality is that whether or not people are willing is somewhat irrelevant, as whether they like it or not, every South Korean man between the ages of 18 and 35 are compelled to serve. While those initially drafted at age 18 are able to defer service until the age of 28, the expectation is that every man will put in the time for between 18 to 21 months, although there are exceptions for talented artists, athletes who won gold medals for South Korea or the Asian Olympic Games, and those who are either too unhealthy to do so or are in other active duties, such as police forces. Yet even after this active service is completed, all of those who are conscripted are forced to do reservist activities a few days of the year for a few years afterwards, meaning that essentially all young Korean men are part of the military. And while some may object to this practice as a matter of principle, it has nonetheless contributed to South Korea's safety and security for decades. Number 2. Imperial Japan Throughout World War II, Imperial Japan has had an army that was nothing if not insane. Thanks to reforms made under the Meiji Restoration between 1868 and 1889, Japan became a modern industrial nation on par with the technical advancement of Europe. And by 1941, Japan had essentially become a warrior society where service in the army was successfully propagandized as being of the highest honor. In fact, the Japanese army was so venerated that even university-educated men and women flocked to join its ranks. And throughout the war in the Pacific, Japan could reliably count on about 4.5 million soldiers to fight in the field. However, despite their advanced technology and the tendency of their soldiers to fight to the death and refuse to surrender, Japan was facing an imminent invasion in 1945. And so, in order to prepare, they began to swell their ranks. While many experts don't count this as a legitimate expansion, what the Japanese government essentially did was make every single male aged 15 to 60 and every single female aged 17 to 40 a soldier. Yeah, Japan instantaneously recruited about 18 to 20 million people, or approximately a quarter of Japan's population, to become soldiers. The idea was that these soldiers would be equipped with guns and defend the southern island of Kyushu from an imminent invasion and in the process inflict so many casualties that the United States would simply leave Japan alone and negotiate a conditional surrender. However, this 22 to 25 million person army was never truly an army in reality, as Japan lacked the uniforms, firearms, or any other visible marker to distinguish these new combatants from the rest of the civilian population. As a result, on July 21st of 1945, a senior U.S. Army Air Force intelligence officer in the Pacific distributed a report declaring that, quote, the entire population of Japan is a proper military target. There are no civilians in Japan, end quote. And in a sense, he was actually right. However, despite their threat, the United States did not end up actually having to deal with all of these soldier civilians, as the dropping of nuclear bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki effectively ended all Japanese resistance. Number 1. The United States Army When it comes to large armies, the one that stands apart for being the absolute largest ever in the history of global warfare is the United States Army at the end of World War II. For context, by this time period, the United States had only been in the war for a total of four years, but given the fact that they had sent soldiers to multiple locations in Europe and were essentially spearheading the entire Pacific War in Asia and Oceania, they had to use a considerable amount of troops and make use of the draft in order to keep their war machine going. More specifically, a total of about 11.2 million people, or 70% of the entire fighting force, served in the U.S. Army, which included not just ground forces, but also the Air Force, which would not become its own division of the military until 1947. 
and support services such as mechanics and medics. At the same time, a further 4.2 million served in the Navy and 660,000 served in the Marines, capping the overall total at over 16 million people. Now, in order to organize all these people, all soldiers in the Army were organized into one of five types of divisions, infantry, mountain, armored, airborne, and cavalry. A total of 93 of these were organized during the war, with the vast majority being the infantry, a fair amount being the armor and airborne, and very few in the cavalry and mountain divisions. Of these, 22 divisions were deployed to the Pacific, 15 divisions to the Mediterranean, and 61 divisions to Europe, making the U.S. contribution in Europe far larger than what many people realize. In order to pull troops for these divisions, the sources included the Regular Army, National Guard, Organized Reserve, or Army of the United States, and it was thanks to all of this organizational efficiency that the United States was able to up its army from being smaller than that of Portugal's to being the world's dominant fighting force in the matter of a few years. It was because of this feat that Winston Churchill rightfully called the U.S. Army, quote, a prodigy of organization, an achievement which soldiers of every other country will always study with admiration and envy." End quote. And I can't help but agree with him. In any case, it should also be noted that in the post-war era, the United States has continued to maintain a large army in terms of both numbers and military and technological reach, and to this day, the United States is often considered to be the most formidable force on the planet. I'll see you next time. Watch our binge-watching playlist if you'd like to watch all of our most popular top 15 videos. Grab a drink, grab a snack, and get ready to binge.